So uh, this is the Wittig reaction. Let's do the mechanism. So you have your um, phosphorine. Remember, it's an illid, right? Because it prefers um, the resonance structure where you've got the negative charge on the carbon and the positive charge on the phosphorus. Why? Because you don't have very good pi overlap because the phosphorus is very big, carbon's very small. Okay, that gives a lot of negative character. This is just one resonance structure, of course. It gives a lot of negative character to that carbon, which the carbon doesn't like. And since we've got a fairly electrophilic carbon here, what we'll do with this is this is a very powerful synthetic reaction because it makes carbon-carbon bonds. Okay. So anything that makes carbon-carbon bonds is really cool because you can build structures, bigger and bigger organic structures, okay? So let's just, I'm gonna erase this part, okay? And we're actually going to use this resonance structure of the molecule, okay? So, so I'm gonna draw it in such a way you want to know about this reaction is the driving force of this reaction is that phosphorus is very what we call oxophilic. Okay? So it likes to um, be attacked by oxygen. Okay? So remember the other resonance form with the positive charge here, the negative charge here. So we've got this dipole-dipole interaction where it's kind of in, in, inducing it to flip over this way, and then once it sees that, bam, it's going to attack, okay? But in actuality, what's going to happen is that's going to induce this double bond, of course, not only to just go up here, okay? You could show that as an intermediate if you want, but what it really does is it goes all the way and attacks that phosphorus there. So you get this four-membered ring, an oxophosphatane is what they're called. So if you want to, again, if you want to, if it helps you out, you can do the two steps, okay? And in actuality, it is the more proper way to show the mechanism. But that formation there will make, sorry, will make this phosphorus or this oxygen attack that phosphorus like that, making the oxophosphatase. So that's going to relieve all of those charges. But of course, this is not a very stable structure. Okay? And um, what it's going to do is break down. Okay? This bond is going to actually break down and finish making the uh, product. And then this one, you can say, does one of two things. Um, more properly goes to that oxygen and stays there, but you could also show it making that double bond there. Okay? 
Remember, it's the same thing when you make these um, phosphorus oxygen bonds, where the phosphorus is much bigger than the oxygen. So you're going to have kind of these illage structures, right? But the main thing that you're going to get out of this. is, and if you want to emphasize, you can show this two hydrogen thing. And you're also going to get the triphenyl um, Are there any questions from this one? So um, I think they call this structure the betaine structure. And this is the one more important, the oxophosphatane. So again, this is a coal synthesis because you can take a ketone or aldehyde 